Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hello, my little friend. Just a quick minute before your meditation story comes on. Did you know that you could be in the real cat club or in a Tucker and Leo club? If you want to hear exclusive stories that no one else gets to hear, that might have your name in, go to the patron link just below this video and sign up. Namaste, my little friend. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Hop up into your bed and make sure that You're very, very comfortable. Check that all of your stuffies and your dolls or your toys, whatever you need around you to feel safe and cozy is just right on your bed. You're wearing your comfortable pajamas. You can relax your body and let go of your busy, busy day. Jane had invited Heidi, Cherry, Vea, Tucker and Leo over to her house. It was going to be her birthday really soon. She was excited about that and Cherry had told her that they got something very special for her. Jane's best friend, Gracie, was also there. When the cats and the dogs came, they all went up to Jane's room. Cherry said, Oh, and Jay, we've been so excited about this, Jane. Jane, 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 we are so excited about your gift. Tucker said, Oh, yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. It's the most specialist gift in the entire world. I have never seen anything like it, Jane. Gracie, it's so nice. But Jane, you're going to love it. I told Leo that I want this for my birthday because I could not believe my eyes when I show it. It's so beautiful. Cherry said, Don't tell her. Don't give it away, Tucker. You know what you like. You've been so excited about it all morning. And I'm telling you, if you tell Jane what she's getting for her birthday before she even gets a chance to open it, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to do something really horrible to you. Tucker swallowed hard. Oh, I won't tell her, I promise. Leo said, I'll make sure he doesn't say anything. Heidi said, How about we just give her the gift really soon? Like now. Let's just give her the gift now. Vea started to clap her paws together. She was absolutely beside herself. She couldn't wait. It was the most beautiful gift she had ever seen. Oh, you're going to love it so much, Jane. Jane was getting very excited. Cherry said, Let's all sit down on this rug. We'll sit together on this rug, right, like crisscross applesauce, with his back straight, and 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 we'll go, we're gonna do like what Cory does, and we'll we'll all sit like really peaceful, like we're like we're like we're meditation gurus or something, and we're so like spiritual and like connected and advanced, cause you know Jane, Jane, Jane gets it. Jane's so like, what would you say? Pillinopical, pillinopical, pill, pill, no, that's not it, Heidi said. Philosophical, Cherry said. Yeah, she's so like, wow, Jane, what makes you think like that? You're so beyond your years. You're like, you're like an old soul, Jane, you're like an old soul. Jane was blushing. You're so in tune and like connected and, and what would you, what would you say? Um. I know I'm this. I'm definitely this because, you know, I feel absolutely everything. I'm like, I'm like an octopus. I feel so much, you know, because octopus, (laughs) they have so many, so many legs (laughs) and all those sticky pads. (laughs) Anyway, no, no, no. Seriously, Jane, I am so pathetic. 
Heidi started laughing. So did Leo. So did Freya. Tucker didn't get it. Tucker said, what are you all laughing at? Leo said, Cherry just said she was pathetic, which is kind of close to pathetic, which is not a good thing to call yourself. No, no, no. OMG, guys, that's not what I mean. I mean, Heidi said, you mean empathetic. Yes! <sighs> I'm definitely not pathetic. I'm like the best thing in the entire world. I am so awesome. Sorry, Jane. I mean, I know you're awesome and everything. Gracie, you're awesome too, love. You're awesome so much. But Jane is like, you know. Anyway, she's not as awesome as me. It's very difficult to be as awesome as me. Tucker said, I think I am. I know I am because I'm a special, very, very special breed of a dog. Cherry said, let's not get into that, Tucker. Let's definitely not. Heidi said, seriously, let's all sit down and get her gift out now before Tucker blabbers it all out and spoils the surprise. Everyone sat round on the floor in a big circle. Cherry took off her backpack. She opened it up and pulled out a bright purple velvet drawstring bag. She put the drawstring bag down in front of her, in the middle of the circle. This is it! OMG! OMG! I'm so excited! Heidi said, Happy birthday, Jane. This is an early birthday present. We hope you like it. And she nodded, motioning as if to say, you can open your present. Jane pulled the purple bag towards her, looked inside and saw a wooden box. She pulled out the box and put it down in front of her on the floor. It looked like a small jewelry box or something like that. She opened the box and gasped. She gasped because a rainbow shot out of the little tiny wooden box. There was a crystal inside of the box and it was reflecting the light. And the light made little sparkles, rainbow sparkles, all over her bedroom. It looked like it was snowing rainbow sparkles. Vea said, oh, I told you, it's so beautiful. Jane was kind of beside herself. She was so amazed by it. The rainbow sparkles were reflecting all over the ceiling, the walls, the floor, and they were super, super bright. So her entire bedroom was full of prisms of rainbow light absolutely everywhere. Cherry couldn't help herself. OMG, Jane, OMG, that's not it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Heidi said, for this next part, Jane, we all have to kind of just sit quietly and watch. Just watch. Let yourself just relax into the rainbow sparkles. Gracie smiled the biggest smile at Jane and Jane smiled the biggest smile at Gracie. And they sat together as if to say, what's going to happen next? Tucker, Leo, Heidi, Cherry and Vea were all sat in their meditation position, crisscross applesauce, with their backs nice and straight as if they'd done this hundreds of times before. Gracie and Jane were sat exactly the same, and they all sat quiet for just a minute or two, watching the rainbow sparkles move around the room. It was breathtaking. It was so pretty. And then something started to happen. Everyone started to sway a little bit, as if they were rocking side to side or forwards and backwards, as if they were starting to go into their own little worlds. 
deep in some kind of meditation trance. At first, the first thing Jane noticed was that Cherry and Tucker were both being quite quiet. She didn't think she'd ever seen them quiet before. But then she, too, started to get lost in the rainbow sparkles. And then something happened. Something really beautiful happened. There in front of her eyes, she found herself in a forest. It was autumn. All the leaves were golden and bright, burnt orange. The deepest reds, browns, all of the beautiful colours of autumn. She was surrounded by them, leaves all over the ground, and the forest was full of trees that was dropping leaves. They were falling from everywhere, just like the rainbow sprinkles in a room. But the rainbow sprinkles had changed. They were now autumn leaves, fall into the ground. And then the strangest thing happened. All of a sudden she saw giraffe. Giraffe was one of Jane's favorite stuffed toys. It was a stuffed giraffe that she called giraffe. Giraffe was a girl. Giraffe was flying by. She was still a giraffe, but now all of a sudden she had wings and she was flying by with what? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. The Tooth Fairy. The Tooth Fairy was riding on the back of Giraffe. Jane squinted her eyes, double checking, triple checking. She even rubbed her eyes at one point, thinking, What on earth am I seeing? It was definitely the Tooth Fairy. Flying by, back and forward, zooming around, all over the place, on Giraffe, her stuffed toy's back. Giraffe shouted, Hi, Jane! and waved one of her legs at Jane. The Tooth Fairy shouted, Hi, Jane! as if the Tooth Fairy knew Jane very, very well. Jane waved at them both, still in a little bit of shock and disbelief. What are you doing? said Jane. Giraffe said, We're collecting teeth! Jane looked left and looked right and saw only leaves falling from the sky, not teeth. And when she watched closer, the Tooth Fairy was grabbing different leaves and pushing them in a pouch that she had tied around her waist. Jane said, You doing what? Giraffe shouted, We're collecting teeth! Tree teeth! Jane shook her head. What? I don't understand. Teeth? Trees? Trees? I don't get it. Trees don't have teeth. Giraffe said, No, no, they don't. Well, they kind of do. But it's, it's hard to explain. It's complicated. The Tooth Fairy flew Giraffe closer, right in front of Jane's face. She was so cute. She was the tiniest little thing. You could barely see her from far away. She had a tiny little golden bell tied around her neck like a necklace and it made a cute little tinkle-tinkle sound every time she moved. The Tooth Fairy leaned forward and said, It's the trees, you see. They have special leaves. Some of them are very special. They have tiny little teeth connected to them. Trees lose their teeth too, you know. Her cheeks were pink from all the effort of catching different leaves and pushing them in her pouch around her waist. Jane didn't want to argue with her. 
She'd never heard of teeth from trees and the fact that trees lose their leaves in autumn, but they also lose their teeth. What a bizarre concept, she thought to herself. Trees have got teeth. Who'd have thunk it? Just then, the tooth fairy saw one particular leaf that she was very attracted to and she flew really quickly and grabbed a hold of it before it hit the ground. She flew back over towards Jane and showed her underneath the leaf, as sure as anything, was a tiny little tree tooth, like a baby tooth. They're very special, she said. Right, said Jane. And then just as quickly as Giraffe came, Giraffe flew away with the tooth fairy on her back, collecting tree teeth. It's very, very strange. And then the next thing that happened was the room turned back into crystals all over the walls again, as if she just visited Autumn. She saw her tooth fairy and Giraffe, her stuffy, flying around in the sky, collecting teeth. And then they were gone just as quickly as they came. The next thing that happened was snow. It was winter. Snow was falling on the ground. Everything was white and sparkly clean. There was a chill in the air and she shivered. She went buzz-eyed and noticed that her nose was bright red like Rudolph's. She found herself skating, skating on an outside lake that was frozen. With Heidi, Cherry, Vea, Tucker, Leo was slipping and sliding all over the place. Gracie was trying to make snow angels, and there wasn't enough snow on the lake. So Cherry and Tucker kept scraping their ice skating boots, trying to create snow so that Gracie could make snow angels in it. They were very preoccupied. The lake was big and wide, and it was really, really pretty and part of the lake that was narrower had a bridge going over it. Leo, Heidi and Vea had all skated over to the bridge. They were playing. They were having snowball fights with a bunch of other animals. Jane decided to skate closer to play with them and see what was going on. When she got closer to the bridge, she noticed that there was a rainbow going over the bridge. And then she noticed Callie, the dog, the dog that she loved so much. All the dogs and the cats and the animals on the bridge were having a snowball fight and they were having so much fun. And Callie was moving and jumping and playing all over the place looking very, very happy. She noticed that Leo, Heidi and Vea weren't on the bridge. They were on the lake down below, trying to throw snowballs up, but as soon as they threw the snowballs up into the sky towards the bridge, the snowballs just vanished into midair. As if the bridge was there, but it wasn't really there. And then she realized that the bridge was in a very special place. A place beyond where animals go when they die. And that's why she could see Callie. She got sad a little bit for a moment, but then seeing Callie snowball fighting and playing with all the other animals and the different pets there, made her really, really happy. Jane scraped her ice skating boot blade across the ice a couple of times and picked up enough ice to make into a snowball. 
she shouted Callie's name and threw the snowball her way. Callie waved and then carried on playing. She carried on playing as happy as anything there on Rainbow Bridge. Jane then turned around and skated back towards Cherry and Tucker and Gracie. She laid down and made a snow angel next to Gracie in the snow. She could feel the cold all on the backside of her body. And the sky and the snow and everything around her was so bright. So, so white. And then it changed again to rainbows. Twinkling and moving all over the walls in her bedroom. She watched them and smiled and left winter behind. The next thing she saw was the Easter bunny jumping all over. It was spring. There were flowers absolutely everywhere. An Easter bunny was running around with Cherry, throwing eggs here, there, and everywhere. Cherry was getting super excited. OMG! OMG! This is like the bestest thing ever! Easter Bunny spotted Jane and said hi. Jane said hi and watched for a bit as Cherry was trying to bounce as if she was a rabbit. Cherry turned around and said to Jane, Did you know? OMG! Did you know this, Jane? Jane! The Easter Bunny! Does this all year round? I didn't know that. Tell her, tell her, bunny. The bunny looked at Jane and said, "Yeah, I do, I do, I do it all year round." Cherry said, "Tell her more. Tell her how you do it. Tell her what you do." The Easter Bunny went, "Yeah, yeah, I do it all year round. I hide them absolutely everywhere. Yeah, so much fun it is. So much fun. It's nice to have an helper though." Cherry said, he's talking about me. <laughs> I'm like the Easter Bunny. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> so much fun, Jane, so much fun. But you do have to hop around like an Easter Bunny. Come on, come and help us. Come and see if you can do it too. Jane noticed a basket full of Easter eggs. She walked over. Cherry said, ah, 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 ah. no, you have to bounce, you have to jump. Jane stopped and started jumping. She jumped all the way over to the basket, picked up the basket and started hopping around like a bunny rabbit. Easter Bunny said, Make sure you hide them, make sure you hide them, make sure you hide them under the flowers. Don't leave them out in the open, otherwise people find them in like November. Cherry said, OMG, yeah, I bet they do. Oh gosh, I need to track, I need to track back. I don't think I've had some of mine very well. Easter Bunny said. Oh, that means double the work for me. Jane couldn't believe that she was hopping around all over the place like an Easter Bunny. Hiding Easter eggs. At the beginning of spring. Underneath the flowers. But it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Jane had always loved the Easter Bunny. But actually meeting the Easter Bunny in person was kind of funny. He didn't really look or talk anything like she thought he would. He was very, very nice, but very serious. He was on a mission. But then she thought about it and thought, well, yeah, I bet he's busy. So many Easter eggs have to be delivered to so many children. I'm not surprised he does it secretly all year round. Poor Bunny Rabbit, he's probably exhausted. Jane bounced around wherever she was, out there in the middle of all the pretty flowers, for quite some time it felt. Cherry ever so often, would shout something silly and funny. 
The Easter Bunny was so fast. She'd just hear him ever so often. She felt like he was checking her work, which he actually was because he didn't want to have to do everything twice. But Jane ended up being very good at hiding Easter eggs underneath the flowers. So he gave her a big smile. And then she found herself back in her bedroom, watching the rainbows. The bright, beautiful rainbows sprinkling all around her bedroom. This time she looked around and noticed that everyone was still there with their eyes closed. As if they were having their own special experience. Jane heard a big splash and then she felt as if she was under the water. It was cool and refreshing. She was swimming really fast, faster than she'd ever swam underwater. She was gliding through it so easily going deeper and deeper down. And the deeper she got, the more creatures she noticed. Fish, so many different colored fish, big ones, small ones, all different shapes and sizes. Octopuses, turtles. Up ahead, she noticed a crowd of what looked like dolphins, all swimming and jumping and doing different patterns in the water. She started to swim towards them and found that she got there really, really fast. And that made her look around. And when she looked round, she noticed the tail. It was purple and gold. It was the same color purple as the bag that her special birthday gift had come in. It was a royal purple, really rich and bright. And her tail was all shiny and glimmery because of the gold. She had long golden hair that went way down past her bum. And it was floating around like seaweed in the water. She had a shell bikini on that was bright purple. Her nails were long and her skin seemed to glitter and shimmer like fish do. And then, when she got to the dolphins, she noticed Heidi, Cherry and Vea, just like her, were meerkats. Tucker and Leo were murdogs. And there was Gracie, swimming around. She was bright pink and super, super cute. Leo was very graceful as a murdog. It was fun to watch because normally Leo is very clumsy and shy and awkward. In the water as a murdog, he looked like he could be the king of the sea or something. Tucker was all black and shiny and he looked like a giant whale. This is so much fun, he said. I like being a murdog. Makes me feel very special. Cherry said, OMG! <gasps> oh, first one, first one, first one to find. Uh, let's think. <gasps> first one to find a pearl. First one to find a pearl is the queen of the sea. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to be the queen of the sea. She started swimming off with her mermaid tail splashing all over the place. What was really funny was Heidi kept wiping her glasses as if wiping her glasses underwater was going to help her see. She looked as if she was totally blind. She kept swimming around in the same circle over and over and over again, which was very funny to watch. She spotted Jane at one point and said, I don't think I'm getting very far. Jane just laughed. 
Where would you find a pearl, she thought to herself. Where would the oysters be? She started to swim, effortlessly, gliding gracefully through the water, down deeper and deeper and deeper. It was so cool being underwater and not having to breathe. She could feel the bubbles on her mermaid skin, like she was breathing through, in and out through her skin. That's why she didn't have to go up for air. It was very magical. She swam deeper, even deeper. She found herself in a very pretty coral reef area down at the bottom of the ocean and all the different colours of the coral the different creatures down there it was so pretty she found an oyster and tickled its back who'd have thought that all you have to do to open an oyster is tickle its back but because she was a mermaid she knew this you see the oyster popped open and said, Hi! Jane said, Do you mind if I borrow a pearl? I'll bring it back. The oyster said, Sure! And then did a big burp. And a pearl popped out of his mouth. Jane giggled a bit. She also knew that oysters burp a lot, but it still made a laugh every time it happened. She picked up the pearl and said thank you. She wouldn't be too long with it. And she swam as fast as she could back to where all the dolphins and her friends were. Up, 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 higher and higher and higher. When she got back, she swam over to Cherry and opened her hand and showed her the pearl and Cherry said, Oh, darn it! Jane smiled. She put the pearl in a little necklace that she had that was a clasped shell that opened and closed. She put the pearl inside of the shell and closed it and then swam up to the surface. It was so warm and sunny. She floated on her back for a little bit and let the sun, the warm summer sun, shine down on her mermaid skin and her mermaid tail. Far off in the distance she could hear laughing and giggling. It sounded like children playing. And when she looked, she could see the beach far, far away, packed with people, sunbathing and playing in the ocean, because it was summertime. For a moment, she thought about playing on the beach in the summer. She wouldn't be able to do that if she stayed like a mermaid. She laid back on her back and floated on the top of the ocean, once again staring at the sky. The sun shining down turned into rainbow sparkles on the walls of her bedroom and the ceiling once again. Everyone was still sat around her in crisscross applesauce with their eyes closed. She'd visited autumn, winter, spring and summer and had the most amazing time. She leaned forward and closed her special birthday treat and the lights disappeared and her room became as normal as ever. One by one, Heidi, Cherry, Vea, 
took her, Leo, and Gracie all opened their eyes. Vea did a big yawn and said, Oh, that was so nice. She smiled. She told them all thank you so much for her present. It was the bestest birthday present that she'd ever, ever had. The end.